What's up? I'm Jeff, the Eddie Machine Co. This is my buddy Josh's 1994 Sportster 1200 that we are going to be taking from just a pretty much run of the mill stock Sportster to a hardtail chopper. First thing we're going to end up doing is draining all the fluids, taking off tins and stuff that we're not going to use. What's up, guys? Uh, you're probably wondering who the fuck I am. It's Yeti from Yeti Machine Co. And uh, basically, I like to make cool shit. So I work on motorcycles, cars, boats, pretty much anything with a motor. Uh, I do engine work, fabrication, uh, electrical, pretty much anything you would want done from your custom vehicle. So welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna be documenting uh, all the cool shit that we're doing, so enjoy. She's pissing. Perfect. Free gas. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, we found it on uh, Facebook Marketplace, and uh, yeah, he had the paperwork, fired it right up, and Josh wrote it straight to the shop. So, my buddy Josh, Mr. Mr. Gallo, the Goth King himself, he had a 2019 Sportster that I don't want to say I built it for him, but I did a lot of work to it. I made a um, custom like rear section with a king and queen seat. Did some custom handlebars for him. Got rid of like all the like the stock controls and shit and put like real small switches. And then he rode it for a while like that and it was running great. And then he decided that he wanted to do a hardtail sporty. So originally we were gonna hardtail his 2019, but um, we decided to just do um, an earlier sporty, a carbureted bike, because it's simpler. I mean, could have figured out the wiring to run the CAN bus and the fuel injection, but he decided instead to uh, just sell that bike and basically uh, fund this build from the ground up. So I, everyone always talks shit on Sportsters. Oh, it's a fucking girl bike, but you know what? I know a lot more people with, you know, multi hundreds of thousands of miles on Sportsters than I know of any people running big twins. So. You, know, you can call it whatever you want it, but at the end of the day, they're fucking reliable. I mean, it's the most reliable bike that I think Harley's ever made, in, in my opinion. It's like you got some guys that enjoy wrenching on their bike every weekend and changing stuff and tuning it and that sort of shit. And then uh, there's a lot of people that just want to hop on their fucking bike and ride, and they don't want to have to fuck with it all the time. So, in my opinion, if that's the type of Harley owner that you are, where you don't want to have to fuck with it all the time, uh, Evolution Sports is the way to go. They just fucking run. The bad side, I guess, of like bikes like this is there's a million of them out there. So unfortunately, they're just not very rare. So you know, if you want a bike that you're going to ride and keep for a while, Sporty is a good way to go. But if you're trying to build some kind of show bike or something to flip, you know, there's a little bit of money to be made. Like a bike in this condition, I mean, it runs, it rides, it's registered. You're going to pay like at least here in Southern California, you're going to pay three or four grand for. Um, but I think we ended up talking this dude, or I ended up talking this dude down to two grand or 1800. I forget, but it was pretty cheap for what it is. What the fuck? Oh shit. Whoopsies! Oh, somebody did some some gangster wiring work. Look at that, they numbered it. Look at those. <laughs> Look at those places. Tasty. What are these, dude? These are kind of gangster. I don't think I've ever seen a bike with those, with these on there. Yeah, I think that looks like it's probably, because I already had the battery off, but this is probably ignition bullshit, which we're gonna redo all this anyways. Yeah, see, that's, that's shitty. It's all cut up. What is this? What's this fucking thing? Custom Dynamics. Oh, I wonder if this is like a... Yeah, you know what? This is probably what they had to use to run that tail light. Basically, 
the LED lights don't create enough resistance because they're like a, a, a lower resistance circuit than like an incandescent bulb. So a lot of LED manufacturers will sell like basically little resistor modules so that the blinkers will work. Cause if you don't, a lot of the times the uh, turn signal won't actually blink uh, or it'll blink really fast. So that's probably what this thing is, but cool. We sell it at the swap. <laughs> I'll take it. harness could too bad. You may even just pull it off as a unit and sell it as a good wiring harness. I'm gonna be rewiring the whole bike. So, you know, pretty much probably gonna get rid of hand controls at all. There's not gonna be any blinkers. Um, basically, the banjo bolt that holds the brake line on also acts as a brake light switch. So if you're gonna run front brakes and you don't wanna run this whole switch housing, like you wanna run like an aftermarket master, that doesn't have the uh, the switch built into the hand controls, then um, that switch works pretty good. The only thing that sucks about it is it is a normally open switch. Whereas if you know on the Harleys, like basically if you were to take the handle off, the brake lights lit. So it's a it's a normally closed switch. It's when you release the switch that it actually makes the brake brake light go off. So to make a front the front master cylinder work in conjunction with the rear because you know like if you hit the front or you hit the rear you hit both the brake light comes on so they're wired in series so basically i would have to run that normally open switch through a relay which is not a big deal but on his old bike what i did is i actually used the factory hand controls got rid of the switch housing and then shaved everything so i shortened the uh i shortened the poles kind of rounded this stuff off um Oh, that's cool. Little, little blinkers. I didn't even notice those. But yeah, so I don't know what we're gonna do if we're gonna if we're gonna run just aftermarket hand controls. I think that's probably gonna be the best bet because there's a lot of companies that make cool looking um, front master cylinders. Just something small. The whole point of this bike is gonna be to make it narrow and strip down, like you know, it's a chopper. So that's what we're doing. All right. Well, now we got all the fluids drained out of it. Got the gas tank off. Uh, I think we're gonna move on to get the rear fender and the front fender off and then probably the oil bag. Um, pretty much none of this stuff's gonna get reused. It's all gonna end up at the swap meet or in my shop for 20 years. So yeah, it's all gotta come off. This tail light is a nicer tail light from what I can tell. I don't know if it's a certain brand, but it is a nice working um led tail light with the turn signals built into it so that's worth something to somebody at the swap luckily for us we have the the long beach swap the so swap which in my opinion is one of the best yeah this is just a oh it's a speed kings look at that hello speed kings so we'll save that i'll probably looks like the harness is actually just kind of wired in there it's just been kind of kind of tapped in there so we'll remove the tail light pull the wiring out of the way like I said we're not really reusing any of this stuff and I'm gonna run um, all new wiring from uh, from the the bike back but this ought to be good Try to save as much of the wiring on the light as possible because it's still a good tail light uh, cool. Put that in the swapping box. Yes, for anybody watching, I know you're not supposed to use chrome on an impact, but I don't care. It's snap-on, so if they break, I'll just get another one for free.
to get the oil bag out, we got a nut here. Can't really see it, but nut here, nut here, and nut here, and then obviously the oil lines. Holding on to the rubber grommet with the pliers because they like to spin. So oil bag is loose, but there's always going to be a, a residual. So not really a good way for clearing all the oil out of these things. I haven't decided yet or haven't talked to Josh about it yet. If we're going to strip this frame down and get it blasted and actually powder coat it, we might. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far with him in the discussion, but that would be the, the best bet. I'm hoping to build this thing like in a way that you could ride the piss out of it, but also if you wanted to take it to your local like chopper show or something, um, it'll do well there. Not oversimplified to the point where it's not reliable and fun, because that's what choppers are supposed to be at the end of the day. That's the whole point. It's be fun. Just fuck the oil lines. We're redoing them anyway. Bada boom, bada bing. It's in pretty good shape. I mean, it's not, it's scummy back here, but it's not like anything more than normal. That According to the previous owner, when he bought it, it was a basket case he paid a shop to put it back together. And so here we are. I'm gonna blow off the front fender, probably take off this, uh, this headlight. It's obviously not the factory headlight. Factory headlight mounts to the eyebrow. I'll probably try to undo the wiring in there, at least to kind of salvage that, because I don't know how they tied it into the headlight. Oh, this is, okay, so this is the hookup for those uh, indicator lights. To the swap meet. Oh. <laughs> oh, that wasn't even hooked up. That's oh. cool. I mean, if somebody wants to run a, a little mini Speedo and the indicators on their Sporty, That'd be cool. A lot of guys don't run speedos and shit on their on their chappers. And I, I think most people say it's because, you know, they don't want the cluttered look, but I also think a lot of people just don't know how to do wiring, and so it's easier to leave shit off, you know, because like doing clean wiring, it still looks like stripped down, so it's not like shit hanging out everywhere. Um, isn't the easiest thing to do. Most. Okay. Lock nut out of the way. So I gotta loosen when you're whenever you're taking a clutch cable out, you gotta let all the slack out, otherwise it won't come out of the control. all that for pretty damn close to triple the amount of wiring you would need on that that's just that is being pure lazy so we didn't really have to cut the wiring harness too bad just uh, on these three headlight wires this will remain with the right hand control and then this will remain with the left so like as far as like starting, I'm pretty sure we're just gonna run a key switch, um, like a car, where basically you have like off, on, and then start. That's not what this is. I don't know what the hell this thing is, but I think you have accessory off and on. Probably gonna have it start like a car, or um, just run a, a single start button, um, like a thumb switch up on the handlebars, just so he doesn't have to reach down, reach down to start it. That's what's nice. That's a that's another reason why it's a lot easier to hardtail one of these um, 
these older sporties, the wiring, man, like on anything like 2000, fuck, I don't know the year, but like the newer ones, like 2014 and up, they use what's called CAN bus. So instead of like an analog switch, like this is an analog switch. So you have power going in and power going out when you turn it on. On the newer bikes with the CAN bus systems, there's actually a PCB, a printed circuit board up inside the control. Um, and the wiring talks to the ECU in the back um, digitally. So it's not like, you know, you have your power in your ground. It's actually transmitting data through those cables. So if you wanted to put aftermarket switches on like a newer bike, um, it's a little bit harder. There's an extra step to it where you have to add in uh, some kind of adapter system that basically tells the, you use an analog switch to tell the CAN bus adapter to, um, to turn switches on and off. But we don't have to deal with that with this one because it's older, it's real simple. All you have is power to your coil, power to the starter solenoid, and headlight and taillight. That's pretty much it. So basically, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull the uh, front fender off because we're not gonna run a front fender. Um, he hasn't decided 100% if he's gonna run a front brake, but we're either gonna do a, uh, a semi-shave on the front end and get rid of the fender tabs or fully shave the tubes or the uh, sliders and uh, run no front brakes. I'm not sure what he's gonna do. I know that he's gonna run a different set of wheels, um, which is great because people pay a lot of money for these mags, so that's gonna help pay for some of the build. So he wants to do uh, a 21 inch uh, spoke in the front. We're gonna go probably, I think six or eight over on the fork tube. So it's gonna be a tall front end. Um, some, uh, some, some Z bars, I'm gonna build him some Z bars like on his old bike. Um, so yeah, so more swap meet stuff, honestly. All right, guys, well, we're all done for the day, at least on this episode. We got all of our tins off, we got all our fluids drained, we got all the controls off. Uh, next time, we will be getting this thing up on the lift and I will be pulling the exhaust system and hopefully getting the motor out. Probably the front end and the wheels and basically get it stripped down to a bare frame. If you liked what you saw, please like, please subscribe, uh, turn on the notifications, and uh, thanks for watching.